from the lovely VU13 Studios, high atop scenic 2nd Avenue, we're proud to present, for your viewing and listening pleasure, the life and music of Canada's Mr. Dixieland, the genial giant himself, Lance Harrison. <laughs> to the 1930s. It was a vibrant period in the city's history, with hot licks being belted out from such nighteries as the Alma Academy, the Winter Gardens, and the Palomar Dance Hall. It's a story not only of music, but also of people. People like Barney Potts and Trevor Page and Ole Olson, some of the big band leaders. And of course, of a young local musician who not only stood out in a crowd because of his physical stature, but because of his ability and his knowledge and his dedication today, five days, decades later, Lance Harrison is still making music and delighting local audiences. When we return, we'll make music with Lance Harrison and his friends. The story of any man is a story of his friends, and over the next little while we're going to meet the who's who of musical talent here in Vancouver, and they're all friends of Lance. Maybe not oldest. <laughs> well, I think you're probably right. <laughs> How far back do you go? Well, Lance is probably going to kill me for saying this, but we started in 1934. And what exactly did you start doing in 1934? Okay, well, it's a, I think it's a very interesting kind of a beginning. It was uh, Lance went to Lord Bing High School, Dal Richards went to McGee, yes, and I went to Kitsilano High School, and uh, we decided that we were going to get together and play music. We'd been, uh, most of us came out of the Kitsilano Boys Band, the original band. Not all of us. Must have been some us. band. It was a good band. And uh, so we decided we were going to get into the dance business. So the only one that was sucker enough to offer a house on Sunday afternoons was my mother and father. <laughs> and every Sunday afternoon, we would have our rehearsals in my mother's dining room. And uh, we'd move the, the uh, table off to one side and set the band up. Lance would come down from the Lord Bing area where he lived. Dal would come from the McGee area, and I was, it was, of course, I was at home. And uh, we rehearsed, and uh, this was all very non-union in those times. We were all in our teens. Really? That's how far back I go with Lance. Did you have any idea then that you would be all be so successful and that maybe you'd be here tonight to we talk were, about it? We were hoping. <laughs> yes, uh, I'm sure you were. But uh, we didn't, at that time, we didn't really. Know. Lots of hungry years, I bet. Yeah, there were, yeah. So. Uh, what does it feel like now, looking back on all of those well, years? I wouldn't have missed it. Yeah. <laughs> it really, I bet. It was I really bet. nice. And then from then on, from there rather, I went to a professionally, I joined a union, and I played with uh, Lynn Chamberlain's band and the Trianon for a short time. Then I went to Trevor Page's band. Uh huh, yes. And any of our viewers that are in the same age bracket as we are roughly will remember the Trevor Page Orchestra. Lance was very great in the band in the sax section. He wrote some of the great arrangements we had, and I played trombone. Well, we're sure that pleased was my that own. you could come by tonight, and I'm sure that yeah. Lance is very pleased as well. Yeah, we're going to put him back to work it's right very now. Pleasure though. to be here. Here is Lance in the band with strutting with some barbecue. <laughs> Thank you. 
sounded great. Let me get over here and talk to the band leader, Doug Parker, an old friend of Lance's. That was a good tune. What's the origin of that tune? Oh, what a question. Lance? <laughs> Lil Armstrong. Lil Armstrong. Louis' first wife. Is that right? Yeah. Tell us uh, who else you brought along to help celebrate uh, this special occasion with you tonight, Doug. Right sort of behind and beside you is Stan Cuddles Johnson. Stan, nice to have you here. <laughs> Sounding good on the bass. On drums, Blaine Wick George. Blaine, <laughs> pleasure to have you here. Gavin Hussey playing clarinet. Nice to see you again, Gavin. And who's that guy over there with the trumpet? That's Car Snedden. Oh, Cars, how are you? And Jimmy Armstrong and trombone. Good last name for a trombone player. <laughs> Thank you very much, gentlemen. We've got lots more great music coming. And uh, right now, here's Mike. Thank you, David. Well, musicians have gained the reputation of being a little weird at times. Uh, you know, understand that? That's hard to believe. They, of course, deny it, claiming that they're normal and the rest of us are the ones who are weird. Well, we're going to explore, explore that idea from the perspective of living with a musician, and when we return, we'll come back with Lonnie Bowers, who is uh, Lance's daughter, and Graham Harrison, Lance's brother. When we come back, lots more to come. The party continues, so stay with us. Welcome back. As we continue along here with the Lance Harrison special, this is Lonnie Bowers, Lance's daughter. You're looking remarkably well. You've survived them extremely well. And this is Graham Harrison. Who, there, there is quite a resemblance there. I said that to you earlier, and you didn't look totally flattered by what I said. <laughs> oh, I am. <laughs> I got a laugh out of Lance, anyway. Our musicians, now I said something a little while ago about people think musicians are pretty weird and pretty strange, and they think they're normal, but. Are they as weird at home as they sometimes appear to be on stage? Well, they keep pretty different hours. Different hours. Noon. Well, that's not too weird. No, I guess you do that. <laughs> no, yeah. Really, that's yeah. the only thing. Just their hours. But they're always. That's home. what makes them different. Nice to have her father. They're always home in the yeah. daytime. Was he pretty stable? I mean, as musicians go, I won't dwell on this too long. <laughs> but he wasn't a little flaky as a musician. No. Really, totally normal. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Did you do more things with your father? Sit yes. Around. Yes. Did you, uh, in terms of, of music, uh, did Lance teach you how to play? Oh, yeah. He uh -huh. taught me to play guitar. And um, as much as I know on piano, which is very little, he taught. Mm -hmm. Was he a tough, stern taskmaster? or no. did he? Because sometimes I think musicians, as fathers, they tend to want you to practice and they kind of demand that you be a musician. But that wasn't the case. No, he really explored the wonder of it all and just, you know, just oh, really wanted great. us to enjoy it. How was he in school, Graham? Was he, was he a Rhodes Scholar, or did he, was he more yeah. interested in his music? He, <laughs> Lance just said stupid. I, he had the brains. <laughs> he skipped He had grades. the brains. Yeah. He skipped three, skipped three grades. grades. Did he? Does that, you don't mean he skipped out of school and missed the <laughs> grades. You mean that he actually mm -hmm. passed over two or three. Which, which grades? Because that's pretty remarkable. I, don't know. <laughs> I didn't well, I had know a French teacher, um, and he said, I'm going to take out on you what Lance did to me. <laughs> but no, he was a good student. <laughs> did he practice a lot in his room? Yes. With, and, and how was that? I mean, upstairs with, with the banjo and all the instruments that he, that he plays, right how was that? Right the living room. And uh, my father wasn't too impressed with the boom, boom, boom of his foot. No. But other than that, yeah. No it wasn't problem. the music all that much. It was the foot stomping that, yeah. uh, that went along with it. We had how great about, parents. Yeah. They were really great. Yeah. They seem to have given you the same kind of freedom that, that Lance gave Lonnie in yes. terms of exploring the wonder of music and not saying you have to do this or you have to do that. No, well, he taught himself. Yeah, he is self-taught. We're going to talk to him a little bit uh, more about that later on. Lonnie, we want to have Lance play a number now, and we know that you have a number that uh, is your favorite. What are we going to hear now, and is it your favorite? It, almost. Yeah, almost. Yeah. <laughs> they ain't gonna give nobody none of my jelly roll. Ain't gonna give nobody none of my jelly roll. Graham, Lonnie, thank you. Lance, over to you again. Thank you. Hey, I ain't gonna give nobody none of my jelly roll. I ain't gonna give nobody none to save us some. Mama 
said the day before she went away. If I'd be a good boy, she'd bring me a toy. I'm my mama's pride and joy. There ain't no use for you to keep on hanging around. Sorry, but I gotta turn you down. Cause my jelly roll is sweet. Mighty hard to be. So you can't have it. Ain't gonna get nothing to my jelly roll. Radio personalities Bob Smith and Monty McFarland on Harrison and Friends. In addition to playing live on stage, many musicians also played on radio. Now, Lance has estimated he worked on several hundred radio shows during his career, not only as a musician, but as an actor and a writer as well. With me now to talk about those early days of radio are two of the best-known DJs in town, Bob Smith and Monty McFarland. Welcome, gentlemen. Thanks, David. What do you remember about the early days, particularly as it pertains to Lance? I remember him chasing me because I had a copy of record he wanted very much. <laughs> <laughs> he caught me at Broadway and Grandma. We shared it from then on. Well, it I, I, I worked on a couple of shows on CBC with Lance. And, you know, it, it's remarkable sitting here listening to these guys because Vancouver is loaded with very talented musicians. And this particular guy, Bob Smith, of course, has helped to... Uh, I guess push jazz further than anybody that uh, that's ever been around this part of the country mm -hmm. by far, and I think he deserves a great deal of credit. Was it better or worse or just different in the early days when you were doing lots of live radio broadcasts I think with, the, with entertainment on? Oh, the live thing was much more exciting. Oh, that was doesn't really happen exciting. much anymore, does it? No, I don't think they do that much anymore. There isn't that much live stuff anymore. Anywhere except the Vancouver show. Well, <laughs> you got it here. <laughs> One of the great places was Ren Williams Piano House. Back yeah, what was the Capitol Theater? Ren Williams has gone, uh, left us, unfortunately, but he stayed some great jam sessions at Lance with the key man, and, along with Jack Teagarden, Earl Hines, and one other name that escapes me right now, but they were great sessions. And without, without a, uh, as Monty's pointed out, or uh, in a way pointed out, the fact that Lance was a boss without being hard rock about it. Yeah. Yeah. Bob's going back a long ways there. <laughs> how, how far? How long do you go? As, I don't know. I don't go back as far as Bob does, but I can remember as a kid <laughs> listening to, uh, uh, like, Hussey. I used, my dad used to take me to listen to him play all the time. Gavin? That? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I used to sit on my dad's knee and listen to Gavin play. In the just, just a little young sprout at the time. That was a long time ago. Yeah. yeah. My, my, uh, my favorite story about Lance is one I shared, unfortunately. It was uh, about 5 a.m. on Sunday morning in May, the dappled clouds above us. He and I were walking up the street, got, got as far as the Burt's clock, the old Burt's clock at Georgian Gramble, and there was a lady with us. Mm -hmm. Her name was Lena Horn. We were escorting her to the, to the station on Main Street. There was some kind of a transportation uh, strike on, and Lance and I were chosen out of thousands of applicants that night to walk Lena Horn to the uh, Great Northern Station. Huh. And we stopped right in the middle of Georgian Gramble, 
and we both kissed her, one after the other. And uh, I left. <laughs> Whatever happened to her? <laughs> <laughs> uh, on the bigger and better things. But it's wonderful that friends of Lance's could gather here and pay homage to this man who is, um, well, his peers think so much of him because he's, he's one of the great guys. I can't agree with you more, but we really, as nice as it is to talk about him, we really want to hear him play. So let's put him back That's to work. That's what we came for. And yeah. uh, right now, Lance is going to do a song that is called Can't Believe You're In Love With Me. Lance? <laughs> Thank you, Lance. Fantastic. Television was a natural progression for Lance Harrison after his success in radio. Beginning in the early 60s, Lance hosted several shows, and I have them listed right here. Some of those days, Journey to New Orleans, Lance's Jazz House, and the Nabob Harmony Show. And with me is a man who shared a whole lot of those early television days with Lance Harrison, Len Locke, who is the uh, regional director of the CBC for the province of British Columbia. Welcome, Len. Thank you. How did, uh, I guess, the long, one of the longest running shows in the history of television, some of those days, it, you were involved with, how did that get started? Well, uh, interestingly enough, it's the longest series we had until Beachcombers, which is seen every uh, Sunday at 7 o'clock on CBC. Uh, <laughs> Uh, this, uh, we can edit that out. This is actually a taped show. <laughs> and, uh... But uh, no, some of those days is a remarkable program in that it was started by John Diefenbaker. Uh, how so? Surprise, yes. surprise. Yes. I'm one of the few people who know the story of how some of those days started. John Diefenbaker, when he was prime minister, decided that the CBC ought not to get financing for five-year periods and that it should come crawling to Parliament every year for the money. <laughs> John liked that sort of thing. This is not going to become a political speech here, is <laughs> no, it? No, it's not. Oh, okay. uh, John gets out of it very short. <laughs> All right. What that meant was that came the end of the fiscal year, which when in CBC terms was the end of March, we had to balance. We couldn't carry over for the next year or be short. It was a problem. And Hugh Palmer, who was then the director of television in March of a year, I can't remember, Lance, when it started, but he suddenly had some money left over, and he called a producer called Gene Lawrence, and he said, do something in a hurry to spend this money, because I don't want to send it back to John Diefenbaker. <laughs> so, and I was a production assistant at this time, and there was a, an emergency meeting held, and, and somebody said, we have to get the veterans, people that know what they're doing, but we don't have much time. So they got Lance Harrison to front the band, and Barney and Thora Potts, 
and the wonderful Pat Morgan, the late Pat mm -hmm. Morgan, marvelous mm -hmm. singer, and Pat Walker, and uh, all the people from some of those days, uh, to put together a quick show with Dave Brock writing a script and Bill Bellman reading it. And it was all put together, I think, within about 48 hours, and it, uh, it went on the air. It really took off. It took off. Yeah. It was a happy yeah. marriage of talents yeah. and people that just seemed to click together along with the script. Uh, the network saw the, uh, the kinescope of it. Uh, they liked it. They wanted a weekly half hour, and it ran, I think, seven or eight years. It was a really remarkable success, and those mm -hmm. talents uh, were just fantastic. One of my great privileges was to work as a cue card yeah. holder and yeah. a finger pointer. What, a, what a great spot to, to begin in television to learn. Oh. And it's amazing how many of the really good things get started that way, By a accident. spontaneous kind of thing. Indeed, and a company and an ensemble. Uh, is the thing that carries yeah. the programs into, into yeah, longevity. Some, some great talent in there. I'll bet you Lance did not know that he was, in effect, started by John Diefenbaker. <laughs> right? That's, that's something for one's but memoirs. You remember that special, Lance, <laughs> that we did that night? Yes. You have brought along uh, something from the CBC. Well, it's, a, it's uh, I, I hope your viewers will forgive the quality. In those days, the only way to record a film, it was prior to the invention of videotape, mm -hmm. was to take a film picture, uh, literally, of a television set, which we called a kinescope recording, and I brought along mm -hmm. a piece from the old series, and I, I hope you'll forgive the quality, but I think you'll love the show. We'd love to see it, and it's, I'm sure that it'll Lance bring and, back... and Barney uh, Potts. Yeah, Lance and Barney Potts, and it's going to bring back a lot of memories to people here so. in our studios. Yeah. Len Locke, thank you very much. You're quite welcome. Television's early days with Barney and Thora Potts when we return. Quiet. Oh, wait. I sometimes think my mediocrity is boundless. It is. <laughs> uh, I mean, it I is. I can do this. Yeah, wait a minute. <laughs> How about that? From some of those days, Barney Potts has not only been a good close friend to Lance over these years, but he's also been an influence to his musical career since the 1930s. They've worked together in every musical venue that you could imagine. And of course, Barney's wife, Thora, has sung in countless occasions with Lance's band. Those were really tough lyrics you were singing there. Nya, 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 nya. That's the only kind I know. Lance knows lyrics to everything. That's right. a problem. But you do the nya, nya. That's yeah, sure. Jada. Yeah. Oh, Jada, excuse yeah. me, where have I been? Well, uh, see, we go back to 1928, and it's, 1928. Kept, it's almost my bedtime. <laughs> we'll hurry this up then. No. Okay. Some of those days was, was like a family, wasn't it? Both of you were in it, and, and Mr. Locke described it as a, as a family affair. That's it was right. terrific. I don't know uh, whether Len Lockhart knew about this, but we started out with a show on uh, CBC Radio, and it was a 20s roar. And they thought that might make a show, you see, for TV. And we were off TV. What's that? We were radio. Oh, really? I'm very happy. Yeah. So we finally got it on the air, uh, just like uh, Len was telling us. And it was a big smash. The uh, 
switchboard was lit up, and the next day, the, uh, Mr. Ken Capel, who was the manager then at that time in the studio, he said, what's going on around here? What is it? We've got a hit show. Said, was that a it? surprise well, to CBC? He didn't know anything about it. He <laughs> I didn't did. say that. No, didn't. But Lance, uh, I, then I wrote a show called Hotel Downbeat, and uh, Lance has got so many facets to his, um, outside of being such a great musician, he can handle lines so well. And I wrote the show, and we got lines in there, and he was just fabulous on doing the lines. What was it like, Larry, that transition from stage and radio onto television, this altogether different yeah, medium? Very scary, very <laughs> scary. Uh, the microphone was bad enough coming from straight stage, but then I did a radio show in 1927, so that shows you how old I am. But <laughs> we're not talking about me. It also shows how talented you all are, because here you still are performing. And I wonder about the performers today and if they're going to have the same kind of longevity. They didn't have the chance. Mm. We, the, they don't have yeah. the chance. We had all sorts of places to rehearse. Right. I wonder if you would do something for us Certainly. right now, if you I'd would introduce to. our next guest, because oh. I know that you know this woman a lot better than many people. Beautiful lady. Will Beautiful you do this lady. for us? Yes, I certainly will. Thank she you. was. Uh, I'm glad that we uh, were able to keep her in Vancouver, because she could have gone back in the States or anywhere like that. My pleasure to introduce Eleanor Collins singing uh, Bourbon Street Parade. Cool. Thank you. Sir. Let's fly down or drive down to New Orleans. Ah, that city, it's very pretty. Historic scene. I'm gonna take you, I'll even parade you down on Bourbon Street. They have all those hot spots. You see all those big shops down on Bourbon Street. You know, when we asked a lot of Lance's friends to come down this evening, a lot of them asked, why? Is he starting, planning on retiring? Well, we decided we asked the man himself. Are you planning on retiring from this business? Well, no, I, I, uh, I plan on keeping on playing as long as they got me key. Play. We'll be back 
to talk to Lance Samore in just a moment. We are back, and at this point, I, I have two gentlemen with me, but first of all, I just want to have all of us give a really special welcome right now to Lance Harrison. We're going to talk to them. Chat. Think about it. <laughs> Are you enjoying yourself? Yeah, so far. You're having a good time? Yeah, I was expecting some embarrassing moments to come up, but uh, it's been <laughs> fairly complimentary no, we so haven't, far. Uh, yes, well, we haven't <laughs> hidden away any embarrassing moments. Uh, or certainly, if we, if we had any, we wouldn't tell you about them before they arrived, but uh -oh. we, we really don't tonight, no. And Dal Richards, anyone who's ever been to a, a ballroom or graced uh, grace a dance floor in Vancouver, welcome Dal Richards. Dal, yeah. good, good to have you here. When was the first time, Lance, that you picked up a musical instrument? Oh, uh, when? When? You mean uh, exactly when? Or, well, I was. Well, I don't need the time of day or anything <laughs> like that. But uh, <laughs> I don't know. It seems like since I was about ten, I always had a yeah. mouth organ or a tin whistle or something. What was the first instrument that you really concentrated on and started to play seriously? I had a ukulele. Then I got a banjo. Tenor banjo. That a was, tenor banjo. Was what I heard. Yeah. 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 I also understand that you've got a really phenomenal memory for music, not just the melody, but the arrangements and, and the way they go. I suppose. The things that I like, I remember. Dal, would you, uh, would you second that? Indeed. We have, when he was with me at the Panorama Roof and we were playing, for, he was, I guess Lance, you were there 10 years or something, just for fun we'd get ourselves into quizzes. Remember so-and-so's theme or whatever? Remember yeah. who sang, who was the vocalist with so-and-so's band? And he usually was right. Very big, he was yeah. right. Yeah. Well, you two really had, had separate dance bands going, didn't you? I mean, it was a separate kind of thing. But did you play together very often? Oh, yeah. Well, well, not for a long time. Uh, Dell was in that same band. You were in the same band that Pete was talking about. Initially, but so. uh, and then, many, many years ago, we both started in high school. Mm -hmm. And then I went with Trevor, and you were, uh, we were sort of in different bands together. <laughs> and then sort of in different yeah. bands together. Uh, I think well, we understand. More, more recently, Lance has been with me quite often, as a matter of fact. He was with me for a long period of time, yeah. then he went his Dixie way and was very successful at that. Now yeah. he's been on the last two yeah. recordings that we've done. You've seen so many changes, the two of you, over the years. Is, is, it a, is it a question that's possible to answer if I ask you the most significant change that you've seen since you started playing professionally in this town? Oh, the rock and roll, baby. Yeah, it's the biggest scam in the music business. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, uh, just, uh, the bands just dumped the bands upside down, didn't yeah. it? And I was lucky because there was still a, a market for, uh, for Dixieland, and, yeah. uh, and Dow, of course, survived it. Uh, well, and class, now more than ever. class will out, and good right. music will survive. <laughs> and, and you're both. I, I, just after the war, I had a big band. I, and uh, Cliff Bennion was here. We, we just got out of the services, and we had a pretty good band, yeah. which didn't last very long. And I didn't liked Dal too much in those days because he was so successful. <laughs> and, then, and then after I bossed around... You sure cut guys. up, didn't you? <laughs> Gentlemen, I think we're going to go back to... Uh, we, now, we, we go to a break, or is Lance going to play some more music for us right now? Okay, I must ask you to unclip your, your uh, microphone there. Are you going back up on stage and play us a little mm -hmm. more music here? Okay, you better undo that first. Well, I, I'm not plugged we'll, in anything. You're not plugged in. You've got no, a wireless I'm on portable. there. Well, then you've got no problem. Lance, <laughs> uh, we'll let you get up on stage and get ready for some more music. What are you going to play for us as you, as you walk know. your way down? He does, he's not sure. <laughs> well, whatever happens, happens. Dal, thank you for being with us. Pleasure seeing you. Lance? Oh, no, I know. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so far, Lance? That's beautiful. 
Thanks to Frank Baker for that exciting version of When the Saints Go Marching In. Bobby Hales and Fraser McPherson when we return with Lance Harrison and friends. The big band sound in this, van, in this city is synonymous with just one man, Mr. Bobby Hale. Here he is with the Doug Parker band and the rest of the group. Bobby Hale. Thank you, Bobby. Come on over and join us. Another old friend of Lance's who wanted to pay tribute tonight is one of the most successful jazz musicians in our city with several international selling LPs to his credit. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Fraser McPherson. All right. Now, do I have to do introductions here? Let me, first of all, let me wire you up, Bobby. There you go. 
good. You all know each other? Yeah. Uh, senior yeah. Rounds, senior yeah. again? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, are you uh, having any fun so far, Lance? It's a ball. You yeah. told me that you want another yeah. 25 minutes to think about it. Yeah, I'll tell you when it's over. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Fraser, tell me how far do you and Lance go back? 1950. Only oh, just a... I'm just, just a, a recent, just just a recent a kid acquisition. Yeah. <laughs> I gather that the real new kid on the block is this fellow. Yeah, I was always a young guy till 15 years ago. Then what happened? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was introduced to Lance by Phil Maddy and the Jazz Society when I come up from Los Angeles after studying a couple of years and got the privilege of hearing Lance's great Dixieland band. And uh, later on, as I, when I came to Vancouver, I was very fortunate Lance started to phone me up and we, we did a few gigs together, a few casuals, and uh, played some of his TV shows and some of his radio shows. He's the best in North America. Take it. The well, best. Well, there yeah. you go. The best Dixieland band in North America. Far enough. Well, we're pretty lucky to have him, to hang on to him in Vancouver. Exactly. He's another one of the guys I think that if he'd gone to Chilliwack, would have made it as well. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No. The best thing about Lance is I think a lot of people don't realize when they hire Lance's band that uh, they get Dixieland jazz player of the best quality in town here. His, uh, uh, as a musical director of the PE, I use him there every year. Mm -hmm. It is superb, the quality of the band. And it's taken for granted, I know, but not by people who are interested. Very good musicians, very good playing. Fraser, have you got any embarrassing stories that you can share with us about Lance? No. <laughs> <laughs> lucky lucky for what Lance. You told me to say? <laughs> <laughs> well done. I was thinking about what, when the Jazz Society moved to the Palomar, and uh, on Sunday nights it was, when it was. A, a compulsory donation of a buck, I think, wouldn't fill to get in. And uh, and the place was jammed. So Sandy DeSantis is kind of a gangster that owned the place. So I said, we were doing the Dixie when Praz was with me. And I said on the mic, uh, you'll have to excuse Fraser and myself for being nervous because uh, we play here every night of the week and to see all these people scares the hell out of us. <laughs> <laughs> Sandy says, what are you, a comedian? What, what are you, a comedian? Fraser, can we get you to play a number for us? Sure. What are you going to play? You'd be so nice to come home to. All right. Cole Porter, too. All right, thank you very much. Fraser yeah. McPherson. Yeah.
music from Lance and his friends. Lance at Trollers Pub in Horseshoe Bay, but she's in our studio this evening. Lucky for us, here she is, Carol Dillon. Some of these days, you're gonna miss me, honey. Some of these days, well, you'll be so lonely. You'll miss my hugging, miss my kissing, miss me, daddy. that if we can do anything tonight, we have to fit in a musical number called Swing That Music. And I'm sure everyone here loves that song. And so we went to a great expense and we brought in Lance's partner. And his name is Lloyd Arnson. He's going to join them right now. And all together, they're going to make music and sing Swing in That Music.
the city of Vancouver and the musical community will pay special tribute to Lance Harrison. Plus something that musicians just love to do. Welcome back as the Lance Harrison special continues. Now we're going to take a moment here for a couple of special presentations. And representing the city of Vancouver tonight, Alderman Bruce Erickson. Uh, Bruce, do you want to come up here? And uh, I'll just hold the mic for you, and I know you have a few words to say. I'll get you to turn around here so everybody can see you and make a presentation. Okay. Uh, on behalf of the city of Vancouver and in appreciation of your uh, 50 years of uh, contribution towards the music scene in this, uh, in this city, I would like to present you with this trophy. It's this very small uh, <coughs> memento, but uh, I'm sure the people of Vancouver would be proud of uh, of you and uh, are proud to give it to you. Wow, thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> wow, what a guy. <laughs> it's a harp. You know, I was ho it's a harp. I was hoping that when I die and go to heaven and Louis and Teagarden are all up there, that heaven has sort of progressed with the times and uh, they sell summer saxophones and uh, no harps anymore. Yeah. I'll, just hold, that. You, I'll just hold that for you. <laughs> thank you, Alderman Bruce Erickson. Thank you, sir. And, uh, we want to mention, meet someone now who's been a friend of uh, Lance for 20 years. He now heads up the American Federation of Musicians here in Vancouver. Bob Reed. Bob, welcome. <laughs> 20 years? 50 years. Better than 50. 50 years. Yeah, yeah, back to 31. Woo. Yeah. Anyway, this is the embarrassing moment you've been dreading. Uh, <laughs> I'm to present this to you uh, on behalf of everybody in the room and oh. particularly on behalf of the staff and management of CKVU. Bob, let's just bring this out here so we can see it. Come on over here. Everybody can have a look at it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, one of the band members said, who is it? Bob Reed, thank you very much. And if we can just put that down over there. Lance, I'll just let you respond to that. Boy, you dashing rogue in that picture. Thank you, Bob Reed. Thank you. Thanks. Old, old friend. Bob, Bob and I probably go back further than anyone, eh? 31. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Karen's you brother's, Karen's brother's uh, home. And uh, Don Fraser and, and uh, Junior and Mrs. Fraser, the elder, is, are here. And I'm sure that Don Fraser Sr. was in that band. Bob Reed, thank you very much. Okay, we're going to go over to uh, David and Maria. But we got some more music for you. Well, we've paid tribute to a man tonight, a man who has brought us over five decades of musical memories and a man who I'm sure will bring us many more. And several of Lance's friends couldn't make it this evening because they had other commitments, but I'm sure that they join with us and everyone here in the studio with their thanks for the joy and the pleasure that Lance has given them over the years, and they send their love to this man whose human qualities far surpass any words that we could ever find. And now, as promised, the one thing that all musicians love to do, more than anything else, it's time to jam. Let's go! <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 